<clears throat> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Rapid Chess here. Uh, today I decided to show you a game between Kasparov and Karpov. Um, when I was uh, like a kid, uh, these were two like main chess players of the world, and now it has become a history of chess. Um, and this is their uh, fourth match in Seville, uh, where was this rule that if champion uh, uh, retains uh, retains a title in case of uh, uh, equal result and uh, Karpov was winning plus one and Karpov and Kasparov had to win in the last game with white pieces so pretty um, sharp ending and also they were playing 24 games a match so uh, imagine now they're all discussing that, okay, 12 games is a little bit too little, let's play 14 games. Yeah, and back in the day, they played 24 uh, match uh, uh, game match. So uh, it was really hard. Um, also, uh, like people say that Karpov, okay, he was a bit older, like for seven years probably, and um, I could mistake just um, as far as I remember and uh, but yeah Karpov survived uh, just this huge um, uh, streak of games yeah and still he played really well I'm I think um, I had this Karpov book and I'm a little bit of Karpov fan but uh, later I learned that he didn't write this book so it's uh, disappointment but uh, anyways i i think uh, i'm mostly accustomed with the carp office i think uh, from the history of chess let's say now i know what modern players play but at that time i knew Karpov. okay so kasparov played uh, the last game which he had to win and he played c4 which is uh, understandable he wanted to have a longer game e6 uh, so um, that's what I play now frequently yeah you're just uh, saying that okay let's play Queen's Gambit let's play uh, something else just more standard than this uh, like c4 but Kasparov again he used his uh, uh, you know power his energy to play a longer game and at that time they played a journey game so uh, when you're playing in a journey game it's not it can take like two days actually yeah so actually they played two 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 day game so uh, d5 and b3 it's um played on the internet i play um c5 and d4 this plan i prefer let's say because um so white player normally doesn't know what to do here you take a lot of space and they play like stupid benoni but it's not uh like kasparov knew what he was doing so bishop g4 um castles castles and b6 uh, again uh, karpov is not playing for this uh, uh, like d4 maybe he was thinking that Kasparov is provoking somewhat yeah he had he wants this big fight in the center very difficult game and Karpov of course he's winning so he just needs a draw so he plays a more standard more uh, calm line uh, bishop to b7 and e3 uh, just not allowing this shenanigans with d4 knight b to d7 knight c3 and knight e5 uh 94 um this is uh, i wouldn't play like this i think you don't want this uh pawn on um uh exchange um, but um probably this was uh Karpos preparation knight to e2 a5 grabbing the space in uh, on the Inside nothing really happens right now and d3 i like this move by uh, kasparov i find this schemes more annoying more dangerous for black because uh with d4 you know um 
it's like your mindset just starts playing rather than you and with d3 this uh, uh, totally like scheveningen system yeah like sicilian with lots of tempi for uh white it gets uh, really complicated yeah and that's what kasparov likes complicated game of course in this in his tournament situation queen c2 exchange and knight to d6 this is a nice maneuver uh, after this uh, uh, bishops got exchanged so this knight in the center does uh, some damage i think and it controls b7 bishop so he can take d takes c and exchange the bishops which are of course very good um, black has good structure i think and uh, at this point he was happy with his position Kasper of took and takes with the bishop um, when you're playing with black and you put in bishop on b7 um, and uh, this knight still on f3 and you see in many games like uh, white plays knight to e2 for instance yeah so they don't want to have this bishop over your bishop yeah so because this knight cannot move and if you move the knight you exchange the light square bishops and i mean you you got you think that what why i played this yeah just i didn't get anything and the white really puts a lot of uh, have uh, hope for this uh, bishop here d4 and c5 uh good move uh, engine says that's uh, one of the best uh, for black um um, for me, it looks a little bit uh, uh, artificial, yeah, because white wants to play rook to d1, and uh, you have too many pieces here, yeah, so they have like pins and attacks, but uh, the move is nice, so Kasparov plays rook to d1, rook c, uh, rook c8, and knight to f4, uh, attacking the bishop, so... Uh, and uh, in this position, Kasparov played a little bit um, controversial move. He took, which was the engine move. And uh, but uh, I would, uh, I think, play just bishop to b7. And I, uh, yeah. But um, the problem is that black, white will take on c5, takes, takes, and queen to e5. So as I said earlier, he will employ this. Um, uh, unpleasant pin so Kasper, uh, so Karpov played a good move bishop takes takes and queen is seven removing the queen from the spin rook to c1 i think uh, white again uh, got some advantage here he has very good development yeah and even though nothing really happens uh, you just um, with good development you will have some chances at some point uh, rook to d8 similar idea just to uh, bring all the forces uh, to defend the position takes takes and before so um, the commentators praise this move for white because um, um, it uh, kind of breaks this uh, defense chain on the queen side and if queen joins the attack then this pawn becomes weak and this bishop even though it like shoots there it still um, takes a lot of important squares from black so karpov took and played queen a7 uh, i would uh, be really um, worried with black but uh, karpov defended very well in his book, he was uh, the guy who wrote this uh, book for him. Um, he was like saying that Kasp Karpov played really well. He defended, he played really well. But I think that um, this position actually it's for two results only. Yeah, so um, just uh, white has excellent king. Black doesn't have a loft yet. And um, in this position, uh, sometimes that uh, white can create some kind of attack against the king. So a3, knight to f5, 
uh, preparing for exchange of rooks. Rook b1. Uh, of course, you want to threaten the b6 pawn. Takes, takes. And queen c7. Uh, again, um, um, he wants to defend, I don't know, I think d6 uh, square from, from the rook. At some point, white can afford himself to play g4 and uh, then threaten b6. And knight to d3, uh, exclamation mark. Uh, um, in this position, I think uh, uh, this, um, I think just Kasparov understood that this c5 uh, knight defends a lot of important squares and he can afford himself to exchange a uh, knight and uh, so this pawn becomes weaker h6 it's uh, making a luft um, engine suggested that g6 is better because uh, you have light square bishop and uh, um, you want you know to restrict it with white light squares but uh, Karpov is a real good uh, intu intuitive player and he understood what how to play exactly, just felt it. Knight to um, <coughs> e7. Uh, knight, uh, okay, let's check this. Knight takes d3. Knight takes uh, 7, uh, takes and... Uh, Queen d2 defending uh, check here, here, queen h3, and uh, you cannot take the f3 because rook is hanging. So let's go back. Um, uh, so h6, rook c1, knight e7, uh, queen b5. Uh, the ancient just says that uh, black is uh, doing okay, they have equal position, but uh, again, your uh, knight is pinned, this bishop takes the important a a8 square, and this pawn is weak. I think uh, white is uh, just, just better. a4, uh, probably f5 is the idea, then uh, this uh, knight will hang, uh, knight d6, queen b1, queen a7, and uh, knight to e5. Um, very hard to defend, I mean, uh, we must uh, give credit to uh, Kasparov and that he, uh, with every move, uh, puts a very uh, difficult uh, uh, tasks for Karpov, uh, so uh, within like last 10 moves he has to defend from all the spins and uh, hanging pawns, a lot of tactics in the air, and tactics in, is not standard. So uh, in this position uh, Karpov took the pawn and uh, this is a blunder. Engine suggested that uh, qu uh, queen takes a4 is much better and uh, just <laughs> allow to take white this b6 pawn with some ideas with, uh, because like queen a3 is uh, uh, holding the position but it's extremely hard to play it uh, in the uh, real game and uh, especially in time trouble so he took with knight takes takes and queen to d1 um, double question mark um, Engine suggested that uh, I like this move actually. It like attacks the the knight and it's uh, queen d8 is a threat with a subsequent check on e4. Um, so uh, the ancient suggested that queen b5 is much better. Yeah, which is the similar idea, but uh, attacking the e8 and f7. And uh, Karpov also made a mistake. He played uh, uh, rook to, um, sorry, knight to e7. Uh, the engine suggested uh, that you have to bring 
knight to defense. I think uh, in this position, uh, uh, Karpov was uh, saying in his book that uh, uh, he felt like the draw is really near and he was uh, very excited. He didn't see uh, real problems. Check. Uh, King uh, g2. Just notice that uh, black is actually a pawn up. Uh, okay, so now it is 7. Sorry, uh, here. And uh, yeah, and um, Kasparov took on f7. So this uh, position is. Um, according to engine is winning for white. Um, queen e7 takes takes um, and bishop e4. Um, very unpleasant pin and uh, this pawn here um, just black is uh, uh, very ba badly coordinated so they will lose this pawn and uh, they have to get rid of the spawn. So King goes um, to g8, and yeah, in this position uh, uh, the game was adjourned, and uh, so that means that they had a knight to prepare to play the same game. Kasparov evaluated this um, uh, end game to be 50-50. Yeah, he uh, thought that uh, Black has a real good chance to survive, but um, I don't know. I um, um, it looks like um, for me now it looks winning uh, engine now shows like 1.5 for white it's not that it's actually very good position for white it's really hard to defend and with this extremely strong bishop um, and uh, very nice uh, excellent uh, placement of pawns here yeah, this knight cannot join any counterplay and Karpov was uh, saying that it's 20 to 80 that white will win and he was really disappointed that he didn't make a draw previously like uh, approximately in this position yeah he saw that uh, well i don't know queen to b5 uh, uh, it was uh, at that time i think not analyzed that with queen b5 white is winning again but uh, like he made a mistake, he made a mistake, but uh, generally I don't see it like uh, why Karpov actually was so disappointed. So let's see how game ended. Okay, so uh, six, g6. And in this position Karpov played h5 and the Kasparov was very, uh, you know, shocked when he saw this move. Uh, he saw that in his analysis that h5 is a very bad move. That uh, ex uh, so black loses the flexibility and uh, he cannot play g5 anymore. And one of ancient ideas today is to play g5 at some point. Yeah, so it was a big concession. Queen d6. Just uh, wait, waiting moves. And Kasparov, imagine he is fresh. Yeah, it's the new day, and he's pawn up. So he has a lot of um, just playing around. Uh, it is clear that the exchange of queens is um, not good for uh, for Black because uh, all these pawns are threats against this bishop and. King will join the attack. E5, important move. And uh, yeah, uh, also white threatens all kinds of checks winning uh, the piece and mating threats. Check. And in this position, black resigned, yeah, because uh, uh, just it's plus 10 for white and um, he cannot just defend all this yeah all the pawns and this knight all right thank you very much and uh, see you next time